Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. And this video is a short presentation on estimated marginal means in ggplot2. So I'm going to first just look, I suppose, plotting estimated marginal means based on a result from a linear mixed model. That's what I'll do initially, and then I'll show the script to how it can be repeated across uh, traditional ANOVAs as well. So the first thing here then is I'm just going to look at setting up the data frame first. So very uh, just random data here. So for, uh, 25 participants, there's going to be two um, groups. So the between subjects factor will have two levels. So, it's, so 14 participants in one group, 11 participants in another. There's going to be uh, participants are measured across four time points. So there's going to be a within subjects factor that has four levels. And that's what this first part here will be. Then I'm going to want to put it in a long format. I convert it to a long format and then I'm just changing the names to the levels of the within subjects factor to time one, two, three, four with a space in between the word time and the number. And then just setting the properties for the between subjects factor, which is group and the within subjects factor, which is time, setting them up as actually factors. And that's just the initial bit here to get us up and running. Now just have a visual to the type of data that we'd have here. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a box plot to what we actually have. So I'm just this, so this obviously isn't the estimated marginal means yet. So this is just going to be plotting um, a box plot. The x-axis is going to be the within subjects factor. The y-axis is the measurement. So it's obviously I'm just calling it measure here. And then I'm going to split it with respect to the between subjects factor, which is the group. And I'm going to highlight any outliers and uh, based on the script that we have here. Now, the rest of you is going to be no outliers in the data. But if you're just looking at maybe your own data might have some outliers, this is a nice bit of script that will help kind of plot that. So this is what we have here first. So you can see down there in the bottom right hand side of my screen, that's the visual. As always, with a lot of the videos here uh, that I have uploaded up onto this YouTube channel, you can see that I'm a fan of formatting uh, the graphs appropriately. So scaling and labeling the axes correctly and so on like that. And uh, other video, uh, videos that I have up on the YouTube channel would be look at plotting box plots and, and histograms using ggplot as well. So they might be of interest uh, to some uh, viewers as well. So here I'm just going to format this. Uh, line 30 is going to be just taking the previous graph, put labeling the axes, scaling the axes, uh, line 30 feeding into 31, scaling the axes. Line 32 is just looking at the font size. I like Personally, I like having the legend, which is over on the right-hand side over here. I like it having it below the graph. I, I draw to and fro, but I suppose at the moment, I'm in a phase of where I like it below the graph. I don't need the label of the legend to say group because each level within the between subjects factor has the word group in it as well. So I'm just removing the uh, title and then color coding it based here, based on cyan and blue velvet, sorry, blue violet. And this is the graph that we have. So what we can just see here is look that Generally, the groups seem to be aligned except at time four, where uh, group one is lower than group two. Is that statistically significant? That's obviously what we want to go off and see. So, and now obviously the purpose of this video then is obviously the estimated marginal mean. So, how, so I'll just quickly run off the, the linear mixed model. From the linear mixed model, we can see that the interaction effect is actually significant. Obviously, just based on the time and trying the purpose of this is the estimated marginal mean. So I'm not looking at just doing this, uh, checking the assumptions of a linear mixed model around the residuals being normally distributed and uh, random. Obviously, that's, you know, it's not the purpose of this video. So here, just to kind of give an idea, a look of the interaction effect or the simple main effect. I'm just going to take the result that we have from the linear mixed model. And I'm going to look at the difference between groups at each, at each of the time point. And controlling for multiple comparisons using two key and it's going to be a two-tailed test now technically the side equals equals doesn't need to be there it's a default that it gives a two-tailed test but if you wanted to do a one-tailed test you can just change that script there and what we can see here if i just enlarge this a small bit here we can see look at each uh, time points there is no difference between the groups except at time point four where there is a difference between group one and group two and obviously that's what we can see visually in the box plot as well but now we can see that that, that difference that we're uh, observing visually in the box plot is statistically significant. Okay, so where we really want to go then with all this so we can is to actually plot the estimated marginal means. So what we can see in line 42 is we have worked out the estimated marginal means, what's the difference between them and whether or not they're significant uh, adjusting for multiple comparisons using two keys test. So here we want to actually just plot them. I'm going to show you two options to plot them. The first is the one I don't use, but it's kind of a function that's part of uh, EM means. So I said, look, I'll show that first, even though I don't use it, because as some of you might actually find this is what you're actually looking for. So there's another function as part of the EM means package, which is called EMMIP, which is estimated marginal means interaction plot. So it's quite a nice uh, uh, graph. So this is where 
you take the result from your uh, linear mix model what what is the interaction that you're interested in when well, i'm lo looking at the interaction of, with group and time and i want to plot the confidence intervals okay so the confidence intervals these other bits are things that you can mess around with this is just how the confidence intervals are going to be joined up with a dashed line and this is just the thickness of the lines and so on like so ci arg is just looking at the thickness of the actual error bars and there are things that you can kind of mess around with if i do a quick one on this here we're going to see it on the right hand side of the screen we end up with this back here which is just looking at i suppose the four results that we have here from the estimated marginal means so it's looking at these four results that we have here where we know that there's no difference between group one and group two for the first three time points but there is then for the fourth time point and this is visually what we're seeing here now as always with all the videos and i suppose i can't just kind of go with the default or studio or uh, output i'm going to format it because that's obviously how I, I generally like to do a lot of the work here is to make sure that they're presented well and if i look at present uh, formatting the um the or suppose labeling and scaling the axes correctly this is kind of the graphic that we come back with now i suppose i just wanted to show everyone this one because it's part of the em means package uh but it's what it's not the one that i would use myself and i'll show you why i actually I use a different one myself okay so coming back here so there's nothing wrong with that one uh, so what i'm calling g4 it's quite a good graph but the other option then is if we just look at the estimated marginal means from the linear mix model and looking at the interaction effect of group by time and i'm taking just group by time as the example here obviously you could look at it time by group as well it depends on which way whatever result you're interested in but just for the purpose of this video it's just handy to look at one result so i'm taking the estimated marginal means so this is not doing any comparisons i'm calling it emm1 for estimated marginal means one and then i'm setting it all out as a data frame because i want to obviously plot it and what you can see and then see here we're getting back the estimated marginal means uh for each of the groups at each of the time points standard error the degrees of freedom the lower confidence interval and the upper confidence interval and generally i suppose the graph that i like to try use myself would be the error bar graph and when i do the error bar graph i like the error bars to be confidence interval so margin of error sorry so essentially you're plotting a confidence interval so really what i need in order to kind of capture that in a graphic is i need the estimated marginal means so that column here and then I need the confidence interval, the lower and the upper as well. So this is kind of pretty much the work really done with this. Okay, so I'll just explain each line here before running it off. So the first is I'm just looking at a ggplot. So I want to use obviously ggplot for this. The x-axis is going to be the within subjects uh, factor. Or the y-axis is going to be the estimated marginal mean. Then there's obviously ungrouping it. So the between subjects factor is basically how the graph is going to actually be split. So uh, it, it, this is going to be a different graph than to the one that we'd see over here, which obviously is using the facet grid uh, approach. Then I'm using a G, GOM line. Uh, so I'm going to join up the points using a line. But then obviously there's going to be the points. And then there's, I actually just plot that first here, just so you can kind of see what that is down on the bottom right hand side of the screen. And you can see what we're getting there on the bottom right hand side of the screen is basically a means plot. I want it to be an error bar plot so i'm going to put, stick in the error bars as well and i'll get something like that actually i just missed oh yeah i'm doing an extra bracket here because i'm doing this off uh, quickly and this is what we'd end up with okay now if i wanted to format that a bit better so uh, again this is kind of generally what i'd always look at doing here so line 67 is just labeling the axes line 68 is scaling the axes line 69 is just fixing up the font size and where i want to put the legend and then line 70 is putting the colors and this is the graph that we get back with and this is essentially a plot of the estimated marginal means which is the main purpose of this video um so and the reason i suppose i like doing this approach using ggplot uh, as the function as opposed to emmip function is often what i find kind of tells a nice story is plotting the box plot with the estimated marginal means so i'm just going to stick that up here I generally like kind of doing this this kind of a graphic because i find that the graph on the left hand side gives the distribution of the data and kind of highlights look are there any outliers and you might label the outliers based on the script that i would have used in the previous videos that are up on the youtube channel and then the graph on the right hand side is looking at the estimated marginal means which is where we're kind of seeing uh, i suppose where, which kind of uh, aligns with the results that we might get with the post hoc test and obviously the post hoc test that i just used showed earlier there was the two key result uh, two key uh, test in that case okay so that's kind of that's essentially it i suppose just the last i mean that is mainly it for the estimated margin range. i suppose the script that i used uh, up above was based on a linear mixed model i just wanted to kind of show that it can actually also be applied if you're using an anova now i don't have any graphs here but this i said look i just showed a script so this is if i was running off a two-way anova now obviously the two factors that we have in the data up above was the between subjects factor and a within subjects factor but i'm just kind of looking at it well what if what if there was a two between subjects factor so technically this is a fudge 
on the data, but just for illustration purposes, I felt it would just help. So if I was running off a two-way ANOVA, this is the result that we get back. Then I can do the simple main effect using the EM means, uh, uh, controlling for multiple comparisons using Tukey. This is what we get back. I'm not interested in the results, but essentially it's just kind of showing you look that this follows the same kind of steps. So if I want to look at what the estimated marginal means are, here we have them here from a two-way ANOVA, and then obviously we can just plot uh, the estimated marginal means using the script as I would have shown up above as well. Okay, so I suppose just what, the reason for finishing off with this one is just to show that the script that I'm showing up above, even though it's for a linear mixed model, it can actually obviously be adapted to work for uh, two-way novas as well. Okay, look, that's it for, for this video. Hope you find it a help. If you like the video, then um, please feel free to like and share it and you might subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and you get updates to when more videos are going to be uploaded over the coming weeks and months and equally if you have any comments please i'm happy to take any comments below and if you have ideas for other videos that you might find might be a help to you please comment below as well and i will more i will try to accommodate as uh, best as possible but for the moment all the best bye now